The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Ingenia Herbicide, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soybean School. Today, we're going to talk feeding soybeans, specifically potash. Earlier this year, I caught up with Omafra soybean specialist Horst Bonner at one of his research sites near St. Thomas, Ontario. I asked Horst to share some insights on the economic response to potash, timing of application, and application method. Now, Horst, we've talked a lot about feeding soybeans, obviously, to drive yields. Potash is always at the top of the list. What have we learned about the economic response rate? What are we focused on when we're looking at our soil test? Yeah, it really is neat. Like, because soybeans need so much potassium, 0060, or MOP, potash, as we call it in this part of the world, um, is so important for soybeans, it's really number one, right? We remove 70 pounds of actual K2O for a decent 50 bushel crop of soybeans. So what does that mean in terms of economics? Well, fortunately, soybean prices have gone up this year along with the increase in, in fertilizer prices. So believe it or not, the most economic response is still about the same which is in, in my trials, and we have a good number now over quite a few years, about half of crop removal if you want, just the biggest bang for your buck if the soil test is a little bit mediocre. The further down you go down the scale, the more you can afford to put on. And of course, if your potash or soil test for, for K is good, we don't get any response. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about application. You know, we don't want it in the seed row. Um, what about broadcast? Yeah, so this is another fascinating point, right? You got to remember that potash is mined from old ancient seabeds. And of course, what happens is that there's a lot of salt in there as well. And so potassium chloride has a lot of chloride in there. And so for each 100 pounds of 0060, you're putting on about 40 pounds of chloride as well. And so there is a toxicity level, right? And of course, you've already hit on the fact that we don't want to go in furrow. Now there's some work that has shown that even broadcast, we can get into trouble with really high rates. So in Ontario here, we've always said that before soybeans, we can put up to 300 pounds broadcast, right? And in this particular trial here, we have 16 treatments. Four of them here are different rates of straight potash. So 100, 200, 300, and 400 pounds. And as you can see from these visuals here, so far, absolutely no problem. So from what I'm seeing, that 300 pound broadcast incorporated is completely fine, no problems. I think we have to really get into some specific dry soil conditions or extremely high rates of potash before we start to run into chloride uh, problems for soybeans. Final question, and that's timing. You know, broadcasting, yeah. when fall, spring, right now, what, what about yeah. timing? When can we do it, when's best? Yeah, yeah, right. So, I mean, this is the nice thing about soybeans. You know, they have some challenges, but one of the really fun things about soybeans is that because most of their roots are in the top three inches, if you broadcast even now, even though they've come up and you get a good rain, believe it or not, we still get a nice response to potash if the soil test is low. So ideally, the fall before because it doesn't move much in the soil. In the spring is equally fine, right? But if someone calls me even today and says, hey, my beans are just up, I, I, I couldn't get it done, I know the soil test is low, can I expect a response to potash? And the answer is yes, if the soil test is low, get the job done even today. Of course, you know, once you get into June, it's, it's, it's getting near the end of the window, but there's still a little window here if it doesn't turn real dry on us. Great insights, Horst. Hey, thank you for joining us on Soybean School. Very good, it's been fun.